Any additions or corrections to the agenda? Any additions or corrections to the agenda? Can we have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? I'll make the motion to accept it. Support. We have a motion with support. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, review of minutes. We have June 24, 2021, regular session meeting minutes. I reviewed uh, June 24th minutes. I've got two corrections. Never corrects ready. Uh, Part way down, uh, Catherine, so the wrong last name. Her last name is Sturben, S T E R B E N C. Page one, page two, page. top of page two. Right, stop. First. Do you want to spell that? Did you get it? No. What was it? S T E R B E N C. S T E R B E N C. B E N C. Yeah. And then um, further down, almost down to the bottom of the page, where it says Vaughn attended the LEPC. I did not attend the LEPC. I was running late, but I did. Uh, get with Mike after the fact and was brought up to speed on what, what was happening. Any other corrections? And we have a motion to approve the uh, June 24, 2021 regular session meeting minutes with the uh, corrections. I'll move to approve it. A motion from Commissioner Newbecker with support from Commissioner Vaughn uh, to approve the June 24, 2021 regular session meeting minutes uh, with the stated corrections. All in favor say yes. Yes. yes Opposed? Motion carries. July 1st, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. I also reviewed those minutes. Correction at the very bottom of the page. Uh, the time we got done was a.m. not p.m. 11.37 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> a little late. <clears throat> Make a motion we approve those with correction. I support. Motion from Commissioner uh, Vaughn with support from Commissioner Newbecker to approve the July 1st, 2021 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes with the state of corrections. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item four, public comment. This is the first of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 20-77 to adopt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. Persons who wish to address the Board are required to comply with the following. One, state your name for the record. Two, speak only to the chairperson. Three, stand behind the podium when speaking. Four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer. And five, follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matters. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. 
the board chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Any public comment? Item five, correspondence. I don't believe that there are any, correct? Right. Item six, we have public hearing amendment to Ogma County ORB ordinance. Uh, the public hearing is now open for any comments slash discussion. Well, I, as we talked about before, uh, I think we should poll the uh, municipalities and see them which one of them want restrictions or closed or whatever. Um, they, they have that, they have that authority to do so. So I think we should do that. I agree with that. Um, now, do the townships, uh, we may have covered this already, but do they have the ability to make their this ordinance themselves? They, I believe they do. They can. They can do any ordinance they want as long as they don't uh, violate anything within the, this ordinance or an ordinance higher than that. Actually, they believe they can adopt an ordinance that is more restrictive or less restrictive, but then it's up to the township then to enforce whatever that rule is. So if they comply with our ordinance, then, then the county enforces it. Right. Right. If they make their own, then they have to enforce their own ordinance. Yes. So right now I, I read that and it looks like lo you included Logan Township. Logan was specific, specified uh, in there. Yeah, I don't know what the origin for any of that was. It's just the original uh, well, ordinance. I had, a, I had the opportunity to have lunch yesterday with Joel Sheltron, who originally wrote the state statute on the whole thing. And, what started at M55 went all the way down to US 10 eventually. So that included our whole county. Uh, but if, I, I know that townships can restrict uh, certain roads. And, so I think we should pull them to see if they, they have, if they have restrictions or don't even want it. Well, I think it's important that uh, we try to remain as consistent as we can throughout the whole county, but at the same time, I think the townships need to have some input on this as to what we're going to do. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, but what does it matter if, if we include the entire county, if they choose to make their own separate ordinance, that's on them. Yes, and they can always make something that's more uh, more restrictive than what we make. Correct, and then they have to enforce it. So why not, versus the confusion, why not do it for all of the county? And then if they want to do their own or, or change the work, yeah, then, then then let them do that. Well, I guess, I guess well, if I've had mixed results as far as what people want, as far as after dark. So that's why I'm, I'm asking. Right now, it's operation of an ORV is to be between the hours of a half hour before sunrise to a half hour after sunset, unless displaying a lighted headlight and lighted taillight. That's, that's the change. Right. Well, I just want to make sure the public knows. No, no, that's the change unless you have the light. Right now, you can only go to the half right. hour. Mm -hmm. It's unless displaying half a lighted hour. headlight and lighted taillight, and then there is no restriction. We had talked last meeting about making, somebody had brought up 1, 1 a.m., I think. Well, I thought I thought the unless displaying wasn't in our original. It's not in the current. It's, it's not, not in the current. It's not. So it only goes to half an hour after sunset Correct. right now. Correct. Currently. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, you, the way you were saying it, you were saying unless the headlight was in it, already in it, it's not. That's the issue. That's the change. Unless displaying a lighted headlight and lighted tail light, and then the after that, there's no time frame. They can. Right. I don't have a problem with that. I don't either, but I think it should include all the county, um, uh, 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 all the townships. But do you guys want to? Well, 
table this until next month until we meet, all meet with our accountants. <laughs> I think it would be a good idea. I think we should send a letter separately. I don't think that each one of us, I think we should send the same the same letter to this, everybody. Right now, you're talking about going out, giving five different versions to That's fair. 14 different municipalities. Okay. Okay. So one letter, maybe uh, direct the administrator to craft a letter. Was this posted for the public comment that, or a public hearing today? It was correct. So there was a notice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what you said, Craig. So do we want to do that? Draft a letter and to put this on the agenda for next next month? Next month, I think would be well, next basically won't work. The, uh, uh, the Pardon hearing. Me? Next meeting won't work. I don't right. think we turn it around that quickly. Um, the hearing the hearing is really only covering the cha that change. If we if we change anything with townships and like section nine have to go away. So it's gonna require another hearing, right? Yeah, we we just schedule it. Yeah. Oh I know it's yeah. not hard to couldn't we do it all in one hearing? You don't have to do two separate for no. the time frame just, and then we would do it just like we're doing today as part of our regular meeting. So you won't have a special meeting right. to do it. We'll just set aside a time and right. take any comment on any other changes. I also think it might be important to for us to get with uh, the sheriff's department and uh, maybe the DNR and just get their input on this as far as road safety. Um, I, I think it would be very important to hear from them. We got it. It's Mr. Coleman who would, is he the one that enforces it? Coleman. Oh, Mr. Coleman. Because he sent us all an email. He you guys received that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just put it on the agenda for next. Is there any other discussion? Anybody on the phone related to this matter? Since this is a public hearing related to the ORV ordinance? So the public meeting is closed. Item eight. Oh, excuse me, item seven, action on consent calendar. Um, are there any commissioners that wish to remove the, uh, any of these items from the consent calendar uh, to further discuss or debate? Just so the public is aware on the consent calendar, we have item eight, uh, resolution to approve use of Homeland Security fun, uh, grant funds, resolution to authorize register of deeds server replacement, resolution to approve increased procurement card limit, Resolution to appoint a member of the Economic Development Corporation Board of Director, Directors. Resolution to approve zoning map amendment number 02-21. Resolution to approve zoning map amendment 03-21. Resolution to authorize increased work hours for the county clerk's office. Resolution to amend rules of procedure. Resolution to authorize board meeting video visits. And then item J, we have Mills Township related to abandoned structures, which I, I would like to separate that one. Um, and then I also would like to pull out to table resolution to appoint a member of the Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors, because I did not see that application. So you want to pull out D e and J? Correct. Then I'll make a motion to uh to take action on a consent calendar, excluding those two support. We have a motion to approve items 8A through J with the exception of D and J. Did you get that? Sorry. Well, you're not including claims to? Uh, no, that's always separate, isn't it? Doesn't have to be. No, I want claims. Sorry. Okay. Is one claims. Okay. Okay. Yeah. EJK. Can we get a roll call on that? Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Kenny David. Yes. Greg Scott. Yes. Resolution approved. Um, I just wanted to table resolution to appoint a member to the Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors because we did not get a, a application and that's part of the process. So I know you, you reached out to Sue, so I'm sure that'll be on for the well, next we meeting. Weren't just, we're just, we weren't just okaying a position on the board, an extra position. 
We were, but the process, which Tim has outlined, is an application that they have to present to us. Um, just that they typically we see it on our iPad. We review it. It tells a little bit about the information about the person. Oh, I get that. But I, I thought I thought we were okay opening of a, another member. I didn't know that we were okay we're opening a member. A member. Yep, okay a member. You want to table it this time? Yeah, so we have a motion to table. Are you supporting it? I'll support that. Can we get a roll call on that? Ron Vaughn? Yes. Brad Newbecker? Yes. Jenny David? Yes. Frank Scott? Yes. Mark Serbrook? Yes. Motion carries. Item 8J, Mills Township related to abandoned structures. Tim, Karen, I think you guys both have information on that, correct? I don't. I, you know, I, I talked um, about it. But. Yeah, I I have been having conversations with Lance uh, Ragu, the Ordinance Enforcement Officer of Mills Township, um, came to me about some blight issues on some properties. I've also spoke with Dave, the supervisor at Mills Township, about the same properties. Um, we need to have further discussion about the cost of demolition, the possibility of the fire department using them as practice structures. Um, what can the county or maybe the land bank jointly with um, collaboration with Mills Township do to help assist with the blight issues they're having? Right now, for me, it's an ongoing conversation. They've been invited to attend the next land bank meeting in August. Did you guys have anything to add? Yeah, I, I really would. Come on up. Uh, David Ryan, Mills Township Supervisor. We've got a lot of people that are living next to these houses. If you live next door to these houses, you'd probably be wanting something moved on and quicker. Um, when we first got our ordinance changed so that we could do this, where we could take the property, uh, destroy the house, put it on the taxes, we got five houses done. Two more were done by the owners because they didn't want to pay us to do it. So that's seven structures that were taken care of. Uh, then COVID hit, shut us down because the courts weren't going to hear the cases. Uh, we have five houses right now that, you have those pictures? Mm -hmm. They're terrible. Uh, we've got raccoons crawling in and out of the windows of these houses. We've got cats crawling in and out of the windows of these houses. We have children living right next to these houses. All I'm asking is, you know, it's great about the land bank, but the time to tear these houses down is during the warm months. We don't want to get into winter and try and tear these houses down. We can't haul trash on frozen roads. So that's what shut us down the first year is the cold weather hit. We had to stop at five houses, seven houses really, because we can't haul. Um, so this is why I'm here now instead of waiting till August for the land bank. Uh, now the land bank, the, I've got a thing right here, and this is the worst one. I took the worst one out of the group. This house is, you wouldn't want to walk into it with a hazmat suit. Uh, they walked away from it. It's full of everything from food. Uh, I mean, I, I just stuck my head in the door just to see how bad it was. It's like a pack rat lived there. Uh, Swanson said, I'm going to give you a deal. Um, I, I was wanting two bids. One company came, looked at it, and wouldn't bid. Swanson said for $8,055, they will clean that lot up. That includes a shed, filling the septic, capping the well as needed. Um, there's two vans in the driveway that have been abandoned for about eight years, nine, ten years. Uh, neither one of them, I would say, have any value. Sheriff's Department came out there. Uh, I helped them to get access to them so that they could get the numbers off the vehicles. One comes back to a guy who is supposedly still alive, uh, Scott here. I don't know that to be true. And one of them comes back to no owner. Now, these, how, these things are filled with stuff. These bands are filled with junk. Um, you know, and I've got people hitting me up for it all the time. What happens is, in September, these houses are going to go for sale for taxes again. People are going to get all excited thinking they're buying a house on the lake. Oh, I'm getting a house on the lake. Look at this. All I got to do is pay $6,000 in taxes. They buy it. 
sight on scene. They come up, take a look at it. It's an absolute disaster. They walk away and go pay the taxes and wait for it to go up for tax sale again. Meanwhile, the families living next door to these houses are happy to look at them. I mean, they're terrible. Um, I'm trying to think how many times that one lady's called the office probably 15, 20 times a year, wondering when this house is going to be taken care of. It's on itself. It's, it, it's terrible. Um, we're asking only that, and we're, our lawyer is going to be working on this. What was said to me is the cost of cleaning these properties up is more than they're worth, which may be true. We still have to clean them up. According to our ordinance, the owner of the property is responsible for cleaning them up. At this point in time, that's you guys. Yes. <laughs> if I'm, you guys. That's, yeah. that's everybody at all of us. It took a while to get there, but that's. Well, yeah. guys, I'm, I'm, if I'm just, research needs to be done to verify which properties you're referring to, to verify that they, the ones that you are mm -hmm. specifically referring to are ones that are in the foreclosure process. Okay. They are. So Those two are on the list. Yes. Well, I thought there was five, but maybe there's no, only two. No, the, there's two. Okay. The third is right. Get in here. Well, you know more than the point. I the point is, you actually own the properties. The county of Oklahoma owns the properties. You're responsible for the blight. I think. I'm hoping. <clears throat> well, somebody's got to pay for it. We can pay for it. We certainly have the money. We can pay for it. But, but our ordinance what's, what's requires the that we put that on the taxes after it's cleaned up right. because we have a responsibility to our taxpayers not to spend their money on somebody's private property okay we can't i can't take township money and spend it cleaning these properties up like that i i don't own them you see what i mean if they were our property and we don't want them thank you <laughs> but <laughs> but you just said that they're not private properties they're, they're not yours you're, you're, you own them Right, but you just said you can't utilize the money to clean up private properties. And then you just said that they're, well, they're going to belong properties. to somebody who buys them from the tax sale. If I go in there and clean these properties up, the taxpayers are not going to be very happy about me using our tax dollars to clean these up. So our way of doing it, and I want to double check with you to make sure that you know we're on the same page. Our way of doing it is to go in there, we will pay to clean it up. Then we take that bill and put it on the property tax. All right. Then you collect it when you sell the properties. And we and and the taxes owed on it now are approximately six thousand dollars. Thirteen thousand some odd dollars. Thirteen thousand right dollars now. The one that's right behind the township hall. Okay, and then we're going to add when eight thousand fifty-five dollars on top of that. On top so of that, that, and then that, it's only a forty-foot lot. Right, and now foot. it's worth twenty-one thousand dollars. What's the what's the chances of us selling that lot? That's the problem. Thanks. Help us fix it. So you don't want to take taxpayers' money at the Mills Township level and clean it up, and you're asking I us at the county level to take taxpayer money and clean it up. I'm going to see. So if instead we of levying say, this taxpayer money across one township, you right. want us to spread it over the whole county. Well, if the lawyers would allow us to do it, to to uh, I've talked with our lawyer. They can't. We can't spend that money that way. Well, now now I guess I got. It. To ask the question, can we? Well, you own it. <laughs> is, it is there any? Are there any grants available? <laughs> any what? Uh, Maybe, but we'd have to wait until August for a meeting to find out. You have twenty thousand in your land bank. Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two thousand. I thought you reported at the meeting that you did this last year. You tore down so many houses, or the year before. We did. So who paid for that? We put that on the taxes, and then it went through the taxes. It was private property. It was privately owned. I don't know because I wasn't here. It's were publicly owned. So I guess what's different from then to now? Um, we're going a different avenue to get this done. Um, we've been working. Ken was in here doing this. He was very good at it. He mm -hmm. understood the law better than he and I did. Um, we, we were trying to work around uh, Ken quit. Gave up. <laughs> he just said, we have beating my head against the wall. We have deeper pockets. So you've done this in the past with township money. Exactly. Then we put it on the tax bill. Right. I mean, we can do that. I'm just letting you know that's going to happen. And what was said is 
you can't sell that property for what it's going to be taxed for. We're not being able to sell it now. Right. Nobody's buying it now. Right. Just letting you know. Or if they do, if ideas. they do, they end up keeping it for the term of of how long it takes to right not, exactly not pay anymore. So I mean, I, I'm here. I'm here just to say, let's get moving on. Right. And let's see what right. we do. I mean, what did you want to add? It every three years. I'm just. I'm not confident yet that it's in our possession. If it's in the foreclosure process, somebody else might still own it. No, we're past that, aren't we? Well, the bank owned the one property on First Street. They came up, sent a representative up, looked at it, and, and they said, we don't want it. They signed off from it. I just would want to make darn sure that we're not tearing down somebody's house. <laughs> oh, no, no. We're going to have lawyers involved. I know you don't want to wait till August, but if the previous meeting where I made my statement, I have two experts on land banks that will be at my August meeting okay. to be able to ask expert advice. The vice chairman of the Michigan Land Bank, as well as a state land bank employee, will be at our August meeting. Sure. We will get great advice, pick their brains, get some guidance with with experts who know the laws. And meanwhile, these people are living next to these houses for another. You know, well, if we do this incorrectly, it could cost us a lot more money. No, we don't want to do it incorrectly. We've already done it the one way. I'm just here as a courtesy to let you know this is what the path we're going to go down. Would you rather clean them up on your own, get your own bids and whatever, because you're the landowner? We allow you that opportunity. Or do you want me to go through Mr. Swanson, who gave me this bid, get it done, we will pay for it, then we will put it on the taxes. That would probably be the most efficient way uh, because this is new to us. Okay. You've been through it. So, do I have, uh, I need to find some way of getting permission to get those bands pulled off that property? I've got to get, that we'll do it. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know. Questions of the sheriff, I guess I got. Can't, can't you just tag a car and have it moved? If it's, uh, if it's abandoned? The property owner can request that to be moved and then it would go to the tow yard. Yeah, because I've had cars at my rentals, and I just, they're, they're abandoned. I, but again, the, the property owner would have to make that request. Which is the county. Which is, we need confirmation of that. They're saying we don't have 100% confirmation. Right, wait a minute, wait a minute. On that list, it says owner, Ogemaw County Treasurer. Doesn't that mean that you're the owner of the property? But I don't know which properties you are referring to. Oh, All I got well, from I, Dave was, it's on 4th Street. Well, yeah, there's, they're on this list right here that you gave me. From they, Cindy, our these, tax ex yes, specialist. Yes, these are all vacation. the properties that are up for tax sale in September in Mills Township. Most of these are lots. But these two particular properties are yours. It says right here, owner, county treasurer. Okay, but I can tell you right now yeah. on what I do know about tax sale is a vacant lot in Mills Township is not going to sell at the tax sale for $21,000. You just need to be aware of that. Right now we'd have to put $13,297.75. That's the total due right now. And then add the $6,800 to tear it all down. Um, $8,000. What do you got? A 40 foot lot, 130 feet deep <laughs> next to a, another junkyard that I'm gonna try to fix. It just, it's, well, it's an impossible you guys, situation. You guys know, help. you guys know what, what'll happen if, if, if we turned around right today and said, okay, we'll I pay know for that. You'll be, every you'll be, other township is going to come know, running in here because you know, know every other township I has problems. Sure. With okay. You're the, we don't have an attorney here. Nobody here is an attorney. No, I, no. I'm, no. what I'm saying Let's is you that. are the owners. Can you give us permission to take this thing out of there these two well, first and foremost we need to make sure that we are the owners i mean this you guys just came to us a week ago so unfortunately there's been very little communication because i believe they spoke to me just as i was leaving a big correct so i haven't had time to do yeah. any research so, so she's doing a great job i, so I understand it's been a process on your guys's end but you got to give us well, a little so we're time doing a great job no. I, I understood that but i didn't want to wait until august to start this because if we started in august then by the time we get anything moving it's going to be october the ground's going to be frozen we can't run these trucks with heavy laden loads on frozen roads. I'm not sure. When does the, you guys would know the police, when do the load restrictions Crosswise come? Oh, crosswalks come out in March. I mean. Oh, is it? Okay, I don't That's know. What, 
when it's after the, when the frost was when they're frozen is the best time to run. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> okay, well here we are. That's what we wanted to bring up to you, and thank you for listening. Thank you. So do you guys want to be put on the agenda for next next? Uh, any committee of the whole world. do we want to wait till august What's, what are we deciding here well you can look into this thing now to find out if you really are the deed holders as it were we will karen what time frame would you like um so you'll be back on monday our tax specialist so if you want to put it on next thursday for further discussion i'm fine with that perfect so we'll put it on the committee of the whole for next week Claims we got a uh, total of ninety two thousand six hundred five dollars and fifty two cents. Thanks. And I did review claims. Ron, I think you reviewed them as yep. well. Yep, I reviewed them. There was two that were fairly high: Indigent Council and Mac. And uh, Mac. Yeah, that was time. it. They, other than that, they look really well. Probably the lowest I've seen them in two and a half years. It was kind of refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, no. I'll make a motion to approve to pay the bills. Second. We have a motion with support. Can we get a roll call vote to pay $92,605.52? Brad Newbecker. Yes. Benny David. Yes. Yes. Craig Scott. <laughs> Mark Serbro. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Motion carries item nine, unfinished business. I don't believe we have any. Item 10, administrator's report. Okay, give you an update now on three uh, RFPs that are active. The first one, we have our snow removal bids, if you can believe that, are actually due tomorrow. You will see the bids on the committee of the whole meeting next week, and hopefully on the 22nd, you'll be ready to approve uh, one of those. Next one is the inmate health care. That one's actually due August 13th. Uh, scheduling that out August 19th will be the committee to hold where you'll review the bids and uh, be ready to approve as early as August 26th. That will have a October 1st start date. I've, um, I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, we have two inquiries online already and that's in addition to another provider I know that Brian Osher was working with. So we may very well have some uh, interesting responses to that. And then the third one is our liability insurance. Uh, that's due August 27th. Be ready for Committee of the Whole on September 2nd. And then uh, as early as September 9th for approval, this is another one that would have an October 1 start. Both the inmate health care and the liability insurance has a statement in the RFP that the board wishes we can have the uh, uh, vendors actually come in here, make presentations if you feel that's necessary. They are on notice that that's a possibility. So. Uh, if we do that, that would just take us back one meeting cycle. So we'd have one committee of the whole is dedicated to their being here. And then you can take another committee of the whole if you like to deliberate, or maybe you're ready to go then. But it, we do have some uh, pushing in the scheduling. Uh, and uh, also on the liability insurance, uh, again, I've had several inquiries as well. Uh, one new vendor from last year. So uh, very hopeful there uh, too. So any questions on any of those? In addition to working on the budget and collective bargaining and the ARP, we have this to look forward to. So you've got a busy few months ahead of you. Is everything on schedule with the collective bargaining? Everything? Uh, just need some dates uh, from some units. There is some discussion about uh, representation among the units themselves, uh, which uh, discussion we uh, keep at arm's length. Once that's resolved, I think we'll have dates. And hopefully, again, those are October 1 start dates. Hopefully, we'll get dates very soon. Anything for Tim, guys? No. Sure so. Item 11A, MSU Extension 2020 Annual Report. Good morning. Good morning. I did prepare a PowerPoint presentation, but I don't want to take a lot of time with technology, so I will just move forward. Um, it's very nice to see you all in person and to be with you in person. Um, thank you so much. Um, my name is Julie Darton, and I'm currently the interim district director for MSU Extensions District 4, which includes Oklahoma County. And um, uh, just so you're aware, I have made Oklahoma County my base office. So I will be working from the Annex building. I've already started throughout the month of June as we return to offices um, from our remote work. So firstly, I want to take a moment to appreciate the taxpayers of Oklahoma County who have 
funded MSU extension through a millage. Um, and we really feel that the investment in MSU extension from local county governments, which we have across the state, is really our anchor in communities and with communities to do the work that we do. We work on providing opportunities for youth and leadership and career development through our 4-H programs. We also work with youth development um, to get uh, kids younger than five ready for school to help parents understand developmental milestones. We work to teach individuals and families how to choose nutritious options and to find ways to support their health and wellness throughout their lifespan. And we help uh, communities grow by promoting tourism and leadership. Um, we partner with organizations like Michigan Association of Counties, uh, Michigan Association of Townships and others to provide education for public officials about um, ways that they can meet new challenges, which we had plenty of in 2020. And we help farmers and businesses improve their growth, production, manage finance, um, and increasingly manage stress. In 2020, uh, Ogemaw County residents attended more than 100, 130 programs that were offered by MSU Extension. Many of those were remote. Obviously, we started the calendar year in person, and we had many opportunities to engage with the public in person. Um, and then we moved to a remote environment, and many of our programs captured a broader audience than we would have in the past. So as we think about the ways in which we're engaging youth and developing youth through our 4-H programs, we immediately piloted a number of programs in March when schools um, shifted to remote learning. Um, we recognized the need for youth who were at home where their parents were not available to supervise them with a couple of programs. One is called Home Alone Safety, Safely. And Home Alone Safely was a program that was designed to help kids understand how they could safely feed themselves, how they could um, understand, you know, how to remain calm in a situation. Um, one, of the, one of the units of that program actually taught kids about how to respond if there is an emergency. And part of that was to engage uh, youth with a dispatcher from 911. Uh, we use different dispatchers across the state and we, we help those kids understand what do I need to know if there's a, an emergency in my house and what should I be ready to tell someone if I have to talk to them on the phone. Um, and the dispatchers were able to say, okay, when you call 911, we're gonna, we're gonna ask you where you live and who, how many people live in the house and who's the parent and how to reach them. So um, we actually gave a tool uh, that is you know, an easy uh, fillable form that parents could write in and so they would also know the birth date, the date of the, the age of each kid in the household. Um, that's just one example. So when we, when we talked with parents and youth about the program, um, one of the responses we got from, a, from one of the youth was, after taking the class, my sister fell off her bike and scraped her arm and leg. And she was bleeding. My dad had to leave us to go get the car. I helped my sister based on the things I learned in the class. Uh, to remain calm by distracting her by making a boo-boo bunny from a paper towel. So that's just one minor uh, example of the way in which that specific program um, helped kids. We also had an adulting 101 class, which was designed for older youth who were transitioning to a college environment, understanding things like, what is a credit card <laughs> and why should I get that? I wish I'd had that when I started college, honestly. Um, I think I would have, <laughs> I would be much better off today. Um, we taught kids about how to have healthy relationships through a program called Couplets. And not just romantic relationships, but really um, understanding how to have healthy friendships, which is so important. And we targeted that at kids at the sixth and seventh grade age. Um, we have um, an ambassador training for 4-H so that they can promote 4-H to other kids. We work with adult volunteers because we know that one of the most important things for every kid is to have a caring adult in their life. And, th and that person may live in the home, but increasingly that person may be someone who doesn't live in the home. And we recognize that our screened and, um, uh, and interviewed volunteers make a difference in the lives of kids across the state. Um, we have a special relationship with Whittemore Prescott Schools and our staff person there was able to do a lot of things, even at a distance. Uh, with the kids in the school, including promoting a thankfulness tree around Thanksgiving and doing a winter carnival. 
Um, we encourage kids to raise um, their livestock projects with an eye toward animal care and quality. Um, and we teach them about responsibility and business through those examples. Um, and then we had some fun with kids. We did programs like encouraging them to plant bulbs, um, encouraging them to explore Jedi training, um, encouraging them to understand careers that they could have in the future. Um, one of our programs was called Venture to Adventure, Experiencing Outdoor Careers. Not every kid is like me. I love school. Um, I recognize that I may be unique in that, um, in that aspect. And in these ways, we know that we are having an impact on the youth, not only in Ogemaw County, but across the state of Michigan. When we look at the ways we improve the health and wellness for individuals and families, we see that when we aggregate our numbers across the state, we're encouraging more people to eat more fruits and vegetables, to uh, move more, to consume less um, um, sugary beverages, um, to increase strength training activities as part of their effort to move more. Um, and we see those results in, in, in our virtual programs as well as our in-person programs. We have programs to teach people about food preservation and food safety, including our Serve Safe program where we teach people who operate kitchens um, how to do that safely. We did a canning and pre preserving a series across the state virtually. Um, and we, did, we taught everything from how to preserve your harvest, so what to do with all those tomatoes or how to make sauerkraut and pickles, things that I know that my grandmother did a lot of um, and increasingly, people are interested again in doing those activities and preventing foodborne illness, which is um, something that one of the most preventable uh, ways that we can help people maintain their health. And we taught uh, classes on alternatives to anger. So increasingly, um, we have a society where we need people to understand that anger is a productive emotion at times, but it can really be a damaging emotion if it's not handled appropriately. Um, so this series is nationally recognized and helps people understand how they should, how they can um, address situations that make them angry. We had a lot of demand for our program called Stress Less with Mindfulness, teaches techniques and strategies around mindfulness um, so that people can understand how to engage. And for older adults, we teach a class called Tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention. And we teach that over the computer. And part of that program involves us actually teaching older adults how to use the technology. So we have something called a session zero where they practice with the Zoom technology. They practice being able to see the instructor um, and performing the motions and, and understanding how they can ask questions and things like that. And we have um, a series of classes for different needs called personal actions toward health, which is research proven to help people set goals around their own health and wellness and make strategies to reach them. And we do that for chronic pain. Um, and increasingly that as a strategy is helping keep people from using opioids um, as a way to deal with chronic pain. So, um, and for diabetes as well, which we know is a growing, um, a growing health challenge in our society. We work with communities and we do that by helping people understand how to manage their money, how to buy a home, how to be an informed renter. Um, you know, a lot of people may not know what they're signing when they sign, you know, if you're buying a home, a stack of documents gets put in front of you and you're just told to keep signing them. And you may not understand what everything that you're signing. Um, <laughs> you may not know about mortgage insurance and things like that. So our classes teach people about those programs. In 2020, we had a focus on tourism statewide. We learned lessons from tourism operators and Convention of Visitors Bureau professionals around the state. And we promoted that across the state with tourism providers so they could see how folks were dealing with the pandemic, how to keep people attracted to spending money in the state of Michigan, and um, even planning for a diversified future. So we have a program this year in 2021 um, that is helping farm operators understand how to add agritourism as a stream of income to their farm. And obviously we helped local governments understand things like the Open Meetings Act in the age of remote um, engagement, navigating changing regulations and funding opportunities for communities. 
And we do that again with those partnerships with the Michigan Association of Counties, the Michigan Association of Townships, Michigan Municipal League and others. And our traditional base is working in supporting food and agriculture with outreach and responsive research. Here in Okemaw County, we have a very experienced agriculture educator, Phil Durst, who works on beef and dairy issues. He did two, he did three really impactful programs that I'd like to highlight. Um, and one of them was educating people about how to reduce the incidence of bovine tuberculosis, which impacts not only um, dairy and uh, cattle herds, but also has spread into um, deer populations. And understanding how we can keep uh, those populations separated, safe, um, how we can respond and actually get those numbers of bovine tuberculosis lower either every year as we plan. Um, he did an artisan cheese making workshop. Even in a year where we were very remote, uh, Phil took initiative and got approved to do an in-person uh, cheese making workshop um, just uh, in, in a neighboring county in Oscoda County. But he brought together people who want to add value to their dairy, um, to their dairy operations. Um, and there's a real demand for Michigan local cheese. So he was able to capitalize on that. He had to go through a lot of hoops to get that done. Um, but he, he did a great job of doing that. And so hopefully we'll have some new artisan cheese makers across the state as a result of that. Um, we, did, we do always every year, we do field days where farmers get together and get to see demonstration projects on either one of our ag bio research farms across the state or at a local farm where maybe a, a research project is going on. And this, in 2020, we had to go virtual with that. And what we found is a lot of farmers appreciated the fact that they could do that from their farm. They didn't have to leave their farm. Now it's not maybe exactly the same as going out and having pork chop dinner afterwards, but it does help to get the point across. It does help them to improve their operation um, and to learn new management techniques and um, about you know, how to stave off pests and how to incorporate new varieties. Um, we're helping people build their business um, we do a lot of farm financial analysis, um, keeping farms profitable and making sure that farms are an asset that can be passed to a future generation um, because we're interested in maintaining, again, a strong agricultural industry in the state and a strong food system to feed Michigan residents. So again, I just honestly appreciate the opportunity to come before you today and speak to you about what we did in 2020 look forward to doing more in 2021 as we transition to being more in person, which we are um, slowly but surely. And uh, university regulations have changed sometimes abruptly and we're pivoting to make those changes. We anticipate having staff returning to offices by September 1st, and that gives staff with children an opportunity to make plans and, and to have the school year be underway before they return to offices. But our work continues whether we are remote or in person. And just a couple of things that are shifting here in Ogemaw County. Um, we are hiring a new 4-H program associate, a program coordinator, excuse me. Um, uh, and we have applications that are under review right now. Um, we'll be beginning our interview process very soon for that position. We're also going to be hiring a new half-time support person for our office uh, with the help of Mr. Dolahanty and our staff from our office. We are seeking candidates who want to work for us we're a dynamic organization that enjoys serving the public and enjoys serving the people of Oklahoma County. And so we're looking for, saying this more for the benefit of people who are listening, um, we're looking for uh, great candidates who really wanna be part of serving the public and, um, and help us to reach our goals. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Will you need all the office space that you used to have? Well, I mean, I'm open to discussing. Well, the, before COVID. Yeah. Um, at this time. Because back then it was, they were so adamant they had to have every office there was. There wasn't a way you could operate without it. And then COVID came along and holy smoke, you didn't even have to be there. So well, yeah. I guess my question is, do you, do you really need all the office space that that you used before? 
Well, I, I joined the office here in Ogama County, so we're using one more office than we did in the past. Um, we do anticipate that we will have our staff returning to offices. So every office that has been occupied, again, will be occupied. Um, but I am open to a conversation about okay. office space. Um, okay. And um, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, uh, listen to any proposals that we have about how the annex can be reconfigured. I think we can come up with a way that it can be used well by all the departments um, who are occupying space there. Um, we value having our teaching space um, when we can do in-person events and activities. And um, we're really proud of the way that we engage the public at a distance and remotely, um, which was necessary in 2020. So I hope that's an answer to your question. That, that'll work. Okay. We're open Thank to you. talk. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. We have our elected official and department head reports. Clerk? Um, we have both of my positions have been offered. Um, the one started yesterday. She's over there. So if you guys want to stop in, her name's Megan. Um, the second position is starting at the end of the month. So other than that, I'm back and busy. Treasurer? I don't have anything to report to you today. Sheriff? Sure. Under Sheriff, sure. were you able to complete your internal investigation? Has been completed. <laughs> Turned over to the sheriff. I've uh, opened up some communications with attorneys, uh, given the nature of employment, employee union contracts, that, and the fact that we have uh, varying legal opinions at this point, we've reached out to the MSA and another legal counsel to make sure that we do this correctly and appropriately. So we are still in final evaluation stage of the internal. Um, I need to confirm you have not engaged that council yet, have you? Uh, we've just talked to them about. All right. I want to remind you of the board's policy concerning council. The board selects the council. We do have that on the committee, the whole meeting scheduled for next week. But I'll make sure you don't incur any costs or otherwise engage council until we've got that cleared up. Right. Thank you. Denise? Nothing other than thanks for the resolution. Uh, department heads or elected officials on the phone. I think I've seen veterans. Jeff? No, I don't have anything today. Thank you. Anybody else on the phone? Uh, item 12, matters from the floor. Is there any? No. Item 13, motion for adoption. I don't believe there's any, neither. Item 14, committee reports. Commissioner Bond. Uh, I attended Hill Township the other night. Um, the three big things was blight, uh, the dump situation, and also the gypsy moths. So they're, uh, the township's working on all three of those. And that's about it. I had uh, correspondence with uh, Mills Township uh, board member and she had brought up the Rifle River uh, property that's currently owned by Ogama County on high banks uh, was not in uh, pristine condition. Uh, I just want to, I guess, figure out what uh, we're responsible for with that property that the county or the, if the public is using it for access and then uh, I'm going to go up there and take some pictures and just kind of look at look over the property and just see what what kind of condition it's in. Um, Who owns the property? Oklahoma County. What was the complaint, Brad? Some of the structures aren't as good as they were. I know Mills Township has done some um, work on it to try to help out the situation, but um, it, I, I got to take pictures of it and, and look at it. So. I'll report back to the board when I do. But I don't sure. know what our, our liabilities are with the property. I haven't heard anything about it. Okay. There's been no communication with the treasurer's office on that topic. All right. What, uh, what structures are there? So there's steps. Um, there's a, like a, a deck that you can overlook the river. There's also the steps to go down to the river, the boat la or so the the canoe launch. launches. Stuff like that. The new launches, too? Yeah, it's steep. It's yeah. all the way down. It's 
Well, that's a fast launch then. It can be. <laughs> <laughs> Going down it is. <laughs> Oh, those stairs have been there a while. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize the county on that. How how much property is there? Only a couple, maybe an acre. I it's not very, no it's not very big, I is it? I've never even been there. You know how many acres it is? Couple acres at least. And then, can I say something? I do have volunteers that were willing to stain that, and I was just having trouble coming up with enough money for the stain. Uh, I had a group of about ten people that were willing to stain that if we could get the stuff and I can't use the township money to buy the stain so I was trying to get someone to throw it in. Weren't you going to get me a list of uh, supplies? So, uh, I did. Uh, what, you gave that to me? Oh yeah, probably a year ago. Oh, well, can you give it to me again? Sure. I, don't, I remember it. It was a cold <laughs> okay. so I was afraid to, okay. to do it. So, okay. you know, it was about a year ago. I, I, don't, I, I remember talking about with you, yeah. but I didn't remember I getting a list. To, uh, I understand that we cost for uh, for five gallons of stain. We were just estimating it, and I think it was hundred and ninety dollars for the stain. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. I had it written down, but I can do that again for you. We need to make sure first that we own it. And would the township like to have it? Do would you like know. to own that? We just got in trouble for uh, we mowed the grass for you. For us, and uh, yeah, if we were mowing the grass for you, uh, I don't know, you got trouble who authorized it, but somebody had their guy out there authorized to cut the grass. And I don't really care, but our mower threw a rock, and now we're got to fix a guy's car. So, yeah, Commissioner oh, Sturrock, pretty sure we don't have nothing. <laughs> uh, would the township? Be interested in owning that property? Well, I think we first. I don't do, think so. I think you have to find out first. First, we need to do a little investigating. So let's verify. Well, I'm just let's put it. Throwing the option out there. Let's put it on the committee of the whole for next. I'm not saying we're going to make a deal today. Next just meeting. Throwing the option out. So that way the communication right. doesn't get lost, but that way we can do some investigation. All right. Well, I've got volunteers willing to do the work on that place. We just if somebody will buy the stain and the brushes, we'll do it. Oh, good. Oh, and I'd also like to say that it was the Garling family that did that repair for the wood out there. It wasn't the township. We didn't pay for that wood. Uh, Dan Darling and his wife and his son went out there and repaired the overlook and repaired some of the fence. And uh, well, they did a good job. So there'll be more information to come on that property. Okay, Commissioner Staff? I've not had any meetings at all the way the month started. Mm -hmm. My meeting started all next week. I had a meeting last night at Logan Township, um, a very lengthy meeting. The board's in a lot of turmoil still. Um, uh, Gypsy Moss, um, a lot of residents there to discuss them. They do not have a millage and they do not spray currently. Um, the supervisor hopefully will be doing some investigating as far as putting it on the budget in the uh, in the near, or excuse me, on the uh, ballot in the near future. Uh, the roads, um, they did not pay for that culvert there on Stalbush Road. So there's a little bit of a uh, dispute between the road commission and uh, the township currently, and they do have a millage for roads. So they provided a list to the road commission for some upgrades. Um, and until they pay that, uh, monies for that culvert, which was estimated around $30,000. Uh, the road commission will maintain, but they will not do any road improvements. So it's a little bit of a stalemate right now, but um, they had a trustee quit. So they have an open position right now. Um, that's it on Logan. Um, Fair board meeting, they're getting ready to uh, full speed ahead. Um, entertainment call book, everything's good to go. The fair is definitely a go ahead. They're just trying to get some projects uh, wrapped up. I'm hoping to make some money this year because they're definitely struggling financially. Um, insurance committee meetings, I think we've had a couple of them. Um, I don't know in the last month, one or two anyways. Uh, security meeting this morning, I was having some internet issues. I did log in, but I was about five minutes late. It was very quick, very brief. Um, basically, basically uh, giving the uh, what I heard out of it, and maybe you guys can add to it, you guys were on there, but um, was uh, definitely the security uh, 
individuals um, definitely deserve a thank you after everything they've put, been put through this past year with screenings, with making sure people are wearing masks, with, uh, uh, they did a very good job with uh, controlling that. So did I miss anything else on that? It was very brief. Next yeah. meeting's in October, but. They don't know or it's on the calendar. It's on a schedule. Yeah. It was a Zoom, a very fast meeting. So yeah, yeah, next. yeah. Was that the sum of that, I think? Yeah. That was the sum of the meeting. Okay. Minutes will be out soon. Uh, that's all that I have. I miss anybody? Um, where are we at? Matters from the no, where am I at? Public comment. Hey. This is the second of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 20-77 to adopt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. Persons who wish to address the board are required to comply with the following. One, state your name for the record. Two, speak only to the chairperson. Three, stand behind the podium when speaking. Four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer. And five, follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matters. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. The board chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Is there any public comment in the room? Come on up here, sir. Speak your, speak your name. Uh, David Ryan, Mills Thompson, Supervisor. Uh, I did a little research on the gypsy moss because we're getting hammered. Okay. Um, the cheapest, when we first started spraying for gypsy moss, it was $8 an acre. They flew over, did a pretty good job. Um, not sure what caused the spikes and increase of prices. Cheapest we could get was $39 an acre. So doing the math for us, I found out that to properly spray our entire township would be around $800,000. That's just for one township. For to do the county is around fourteen million dollars. So you're looking at a, a really, really expensive proposition. Just so you know, it's and uh, also the trees, the oak leaves will grow back. I checked with the DNR. Once they're denuded, the the worms die off. The leaves will grow back on the conifer. Not on the oak trees and the other trees, it will grow back. The thing that's killing them is the pine trees. They will not recover. The needles are being eaten. And once they're gone, those trees will die. Um, anyways, we've been hammered. I've been hammered on a personal level. We got one mill to handle this problem. And one mill in Mills Township is not going to cover the problem that we have. So just letting you know that. You guys did spray this year, correct? We you guys did. did spray. Well, we we at twenty nine dollars an acre. We sprayed. We have an orden or um, a gypsy moth coordinator. Mm -hmm. What he does is he goes out and finds numbers. He'll find out where the gypsy moths are the thickest, where the nests are the thickest. He'll do a count. So he drives around in his truck. He he goes into the areas, and and we can't possibly hope to cover every square inch of, of the township. So what he does is he finds out where they're the thickest and then we spray those areas and then hope this has been the worst hatch in years. Um, they're everywhere. And, and I feel for people, I've got them in my house, the tree that I planted in memory of my granddaughter that died, they ate the leaves off from it to the point where there was none left. Now it's coming back. There's little leaves popping out fertilized and watered it really well, it's going to live, I think. But another year like that, maybe it won't. <clears throat> and I'm just letting you know, it's going to be an expensive proposition to beat these things. Uh, I do know that Connecticut and Rhode Island gave up. They just said, we don't have millions of dollars. I think Rhode Island said it'd be $300 million to stop the gypsy moss uh, in their state. That's just ridiculous. Uh, Michigan probably would be double that or more or more. Anyways, yeah, it's just uh, people don't realize what we're up against. These things are not native to the United States. A uh, college professor wanted to crossbreed them with silkworms. So he at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology or whatever it was, he brought them into the United States, eight of them. 
Sorry, your three minutes. Uh, All right. He brought in eight of them and just he would let them go. Any other public comment? Well, I'm happy that those out this phrase with your three models because Ma my, my dad. Come on, come on up here. No. Any other public comment on the phone? I think. I think. Is there any any public comment on the phone? What's that, Commissioner Scott? We uh we passed the uh, the amendment to our uh, rules of procedure through consent. I don't think it'd be a bad idea if you at least read the the additions that we did pass. I figured that would start next meeting. Okay. All right. Fine. I did want to ask the board, um, as far as committee of the whole, now that our restrictions are, are limited, as far as meeting, if you guys are comfortable, if you still want to stay up here, if you want to resume meetings like we used to back in the other kind of a round table format. I'd much rather go to a round table. I don't know that we either out front here, a table moved out front for our meeting or in there, but I, I think we need to get away from this, this podium set up back here for the committee as a whole because the public's got, well, even we need to set on a level playing field with, with the participants in our committee as a whole. Any other input? I think the only issue you're gonna have is maybe with the screen, with the, the Zoom, putting that, you'll have to, Tom will have to move all that into there. Would you rather have it a set up out here? The tables would be pretty simple. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying for Tom's benefit. I, I think, I I think, think it's actually safer in the room to the side because I got to run the cords all the way across the floor for your microphones. Whereas in the other room, I could just move it up against the wall. I prefer the way that you guys are now for all your meetings. But if you're going to use the committee of the whole, um side room that that'd be better than having it all set up all in the chambers around the round table my own opinion you prefer it this way because the setup as far as ease or because i don't have to move the tv every single meeting because you guys alternate back and forth that's yeah. all <laughs> i don't have a problem with this up here but but i wanted everybody's input i think everybody should should uh participate in this decision i can find the way it is well, then I think then we need to eliminate the podium and have them seated at the table. I think that our speakers, I think that the people that come and speak to us are are intimidated by the podium during a committee meeting. The only problem now, with that this is meeting is a different thing. Right, but the only problem with that is we want to make sure that they can be heard. Uh, on without the without the microphone well, is is that's movable. Is it Zoom going to be able to hear that? That's movable. That microphone moves. I mean, what's your thoughts? Well, we could easily move. Have the tables moved in here? If the microphone's an issue, I don't know how the system works, but uh, we could, I'm sure, find a portable stand, table stand. If we needed to move it around people, we could do that. Yeah. Uh, they don't. We don't typically have, you know, just hordes of people in these meetings, so. Uh, I'm not sure even that's going to be an issue most of the time. It's we'll be close enough to each other. We can hear each other. Uh, but logistically, we can set that up. We can set line the table or you know, shoe shape, whatever you want to do down here and leave that camera right where it is. And I'm sure we could catch everybody at least looking at that small frame up there. It looks like it would capture everybody fairly easily. Uh, so it's just a matter then of making sure, and I'll get with Chris, uh, just making sure those tables are set up and ready to go. So you want to make the environment friendly. Hmm? You just want to make the environment friendly and approachable. Well, it's committee meeting. It's a, it's yes. We'd like to sit down, and I, I think this is an intimidating type of a. Uh, we heard that from the public. You heard a a, a, a comment made in, in in public comment about. You all set up there. Well, know. in a regular meeting, you would, but well, that's the reason they went in the other room if we're committee, if we're committee meeting, for a committee for a whole meeting on camera. Pardon me. Does the committee of the whole meeting even need to be on Zoom? I like it on Zoom. I I do. That way, there's input. People can hear what's going on versus hearsay. 
at least it's I, I agree with that. I uh, think yeah. it's very appropriate to have it via Zoom, all of them, you know, so you get the transparency. Uh, okay, so we'll work on that next week. Is there any public comment? I, I apologize, I got off. Any public? Oh, come on up here, sir. Um, for the record, I'm Mike Mayer, and uh, I'm from uh, Logan Township, and uh, never been to a commissioner's meeting. Uh, I find it very informative. Uh, I really uh, appreciate and uh, like the setting of what I witnessed here, and uh, I wanted to thank Tim uh, much for uh, uh, in our township. There's major turmoil going on, and uh, a lot of the residents don't know how to handle what's going on with the board. Uh, they've gone into closed session, and, and uh, a lot of things that people that totally believe is going on that's wrong. And I uh, called Tim and, and we had a lengthy conversation and it was very informative. He helped me with uh, accepting uh, how to go to the meeting and move forward, but there's still major things that I believe needs to be addressed. And the only place I see we're going to get answers at our township is here at, the town, I, I, at this level where the commissioners should help us get through with some major stuff that's going on. Uh, many people there believe stuff is going on uh, that's wrong, illegal, and that possibly worse than that, and we really don't know how to handle it, and that's why I came to this meeting, and I sure hope uh, that uh, the county commissioners could help with the situation that's going on there. And I thank you for your time. Thanks. Is your, excuse me, is your last name I-E or E-R? I-E. Is there any public comment on the phone? Any public comment? Make a motion to adjourn. Support. We have a motion with support to adjourn at 1010. Motion adjourned. 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Right. laughs>